Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is your girl AJ Silex Zoo. How are you doing today? Today we'll be learning necklines, different type of necklines you can put in your basic bodies or your gown and all of that. So we'll be learning our round neck, our high neck, our jewel neck, V neck, canoe neck, turtle neck, sweetheart neck. But we also have other types like the altar neck and the cow neck and then we also have the square neck. But today we'll be learning these other ones first that are very common that we need, we use on uh, almost all our clothes, whether our ready to wear or our best poke, the one we give our tailors to make for us. So we'll be learning how to make all of these necklines here. So these necklines you're laying, you're going to be putting them into your basic bodies or your gown when making your gown. Like um, the basic bodies uh, tutorial I dropped previously, I think I used a round neck. So if you want to uh, practice, you can change the neckline, use one of these necklines. So if you really want to learn these necklines, please watch the video till the end. So I'll be repeating the necklines we'll be using, we'll be studying today again. I said the round neck, the high neck, the draw neck, the V neck, cow neck, turtle neck, and sweetheart neck. into two because now we are cutting our front bodies the front pattern is always on fold whether for a gown or for a top so it's on fold so our round neck our measurements which we've already done on our basic bodies making is three inches by six inches three inches wideness by six inches depth so you just mark six mark it here as well and then use your ruler to join it to form a rectangle be sure that this wideness is three inches as we said this is the mark of three inches so i have to rule again so just be sure this is three inches then you join it here so this is it so the next thing we do is for someone who doesn't have a french curve you can just on the angle 90 just mark one inch upwards then you cut then you can mark half inch from this line mark half inch on this line as well then make sure you connect it like this through the angle 90 and this so this is your round neck this is for someone who doesn't have a french curve but for a person that have a french curve well so easy you, you're good to go so just mark it like this you can get your french curve in your bookshop in your bookstore so just go to any local bookstores around you and ask for a french curve so just cut it don't forget that this is the neckline. Let this let assume this is a basic, basic body so we're making, whether a gown or a body. You just take your shoulder slant, take your shoulder, whatever your shoulder measurement is, take your slant of one inch below, connect it to the slant, and then get your arm o depth, get the arm o curve, and then continue your measurement. So whatever I'm going to do, I'm only all I'm going to show you just how to cut the neckline. You know how to do the shoulder stance and all of that. If you do not know how to do it, check the description box for the tutorial on how to make your basic bodies, how to make your basic gown. You know how to, you learn how to get the shoulder slant, the arm holder. So this is basically a round neck. So I'll just label it round neck. 
The next on the list is our high neck. So for the high neck, we are using the neck depth and neck width at, as the same. For high neck, the depth, the depth and the width is the same. And we are using 3 inches, which is the standard for round neck wideness, 3 inches. And we are still coming down by 3 inches. So this is our high neck. So for the round neck, we said we came down by 6 inches, but for the high neck, for the round neck, we came down by 6 inches, but for the round high neck, we are coming down by 3 inches. You can still do that same 1 inch at the midpoint, but I'll just, not to waste time, I'll just use my French curve and then get the curve. Make sure the French curve touches this line and then this line. So this is it. So this is our high neck. I said 3 by 3. Why for the uh, round neck, 6, why yes, 3. So just cut it out. So this is the high neck. So if you place this shoulder on on a, on, on a human, you see that the neck will go up. And if you look at it now, both of them, their dimension, they are the same. But you can see that the necklines are different. So, high neck. Then the next neckline we'll be learning is our jewel neck. So almost similar to the high neck, but it's higher than the high neck because the width of the jewel neck is smaller than the high neck. So for the jewel neck, the wideness is two and a half. Why the depth is same three inch at uh, three inches as the high neck. So I'll just mark it. Then we draw our square or our triangle rectangle depending on the type of neckline. Then I'll use my French curve. So yeah, it's three inches. Yes, yeah, two and a half for two point five for our draw neck. Then we'll curve it. So these are drawer neck. I'll just cut it out and tag it. So don't forget when you're cutting on your fabric, you can do your shoulder slant and all of that. So I'll just label it draw neck. So this is it. Then the next neckline we'll be learning is our V neck. So our V neck, we have two ways of achieving our V neck. So just watch out. For the width of our V neck or the wideness of our V neck is three and a half. Why the depth depends on the person if it's busty or not. So just put the tape on the person's neck, on the person's shoulder rather, and take the tape to wherever the tape put to wherever the person wants the V to stop. But generally, V neck is mostly nine inches depth. So you can do it shorter, you can do it longer, depends on what you want. So you just rule it straight. So this is your V neck. Let me see if another marker for my brighter. Okay, this is good. So this is the V neck. So this length is nine inches. Why this wideness is 3.5, that is 3.5. So you could choose to cut it like this straight, or you could take the midpoint of this line. This is the midpoint of this line. Then on the midpoint, come in by half inch. This is just a guide, it's not constant. It's just a guide on how to curve it. Come in by half inch, start the curve from this end to the half inch, and then back to this starting point. Make sure your curve is perfect. So I said you could cut the line on the straight line, let me cut on the straight line so you see the effect of the V. So this is it. This is what the V looks like. Very straight, v, sharp V. Or if you want the V to be curved, then you can follow the other curved line we just made. So this, we are doing it on paper here. But this is just basically how to do it also on your fabric. So you can try it out with your pattern paper, get it perfect before you cut on fabric. So this is our V-neck. V-neck. Or you can just use ordinary V, V for Victoria or V for Veronica. Then the next neckline we'll be learning is our cable neck. 
So our kelo neck, the wideness is five and a half inch wideness to three and a half inch depth. So you just mark the five and a half wideness while the depth is three and a half. So you just mark it three and a half. Make sure here is five and a half. Okay, so this is point five and a half. So we'll draw our lines now. Then we call with our French call. For your cane neck, you can take the uh, the angle 90. Other neck, like we said, angle 90, you can do one inch. But for cane neck, you can go as much as two inches for angle 90. So for those that don't have French curve, just go two inches at angle 90 and then connect it. But I'll be using my French curve to connect. So this is it. This is the cane neck. I hope this is clear enough. I don't know what's happening to my markers today. So this is our cano neck. So I'll just cut it out. Then when you're drawing the shoulder, constructing the shoulder of your cano neck, don't start, for example, the shoulder of the person now, let's say it's seven inches. Don't start your shoulder slant from here. Still mark your three inch, three inch, in three inches wideness, which is the standard for round neck. Mark it out. Then from here, draw your shoulder slant. So let's assume the person's shoulder is seven inches. This is seven inches. On this seven inches, normally it will come down by one inch. Don't connect this one inch here. It will fall off your shoulder. So connect it here like this. So this is how you construct your. You see, so it's coming. The, the shoulder is still coming from these three inches. So you can construct it. Then you cannot cut your necklace. So by the time you construct, let's assume. This is the arm o depth, and then this is the arm o circumference, the curve. Sorry, I just cut my thin neck like this, and then I can cut my shoulder slant like this. So now the shoulder is not just slanty, slanting directly from the end point of the neck. It came from the three inches mark. So this is a thin neck line. Neck. Oh, this is interesting. I just hope you practice this and try these neck necklines on your garment when you're making your gown or your top. The next one will be our total neck. I'll be doing for both back and front. For the round neck, the front um, um, depth is six inches. While the back depth, you can do one between one to two inches. So in case you don't know how to construct the round neck either back or front watch the tutorial on how to make basic bodies the tutorial on how to make basic bodies you see that i used round neck and you see how i constructed the back and the front so this is our total neck and the depth is two and a half while the width is also two and a half so just like every other one we we'll measure two and a half here and we we'll measure two and a half here we'll still measure it here just to be sure that we get the perfect box then we we'll use our french curve to curve it out so this is our total neck So I will just cut it out. So this is the front of our total neck. But you understand that the total neck is not just like this. There's something like a band. So I'll explain. Let me cut the back of the total neck. I hope you're enjoying this video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you've not clicked on the subscribe button, please kindly do so. So for the back neck, we still go by the same wideness which is two and a half but we're coming down by only half inch so we'll just rule it so two and a half by half is the standard for the, the total neck sorry then you just draw your curve 
if you notice now this is not so obvious because we are just coming down by half inch so it's almost like you're not coming down by anything so this is it so this is the turtle neck back and the front turtle neck so by the time you cut your band you fix the band around it will go around the neck and form that turtle neck you see in your gowns in your jumpsuit in your tops and all of that so this is how to so to learn how to make your band just watch the tutorial on how to make skates search for the tutorial how to make skates you see the band making process you can just use that in the skates making tutorial i explain that for your band you take your waist measurement but for your Total neck top or gown or whatever you are measuring your neck second frame. Just put your tape around your neck, take the wideness and then cut it on a fabric, whatever fabric you're using. Make sure it's on fold and then join the sides of the fabric, which is the band. Join the sides of the band on the video on how to make band in the skirt video. You see all of that. Then you just attach it. To the neck but you attach it when you've joined the two shoulders the back and front shoulders of your total neck blouse or whatever or gown whichever it is then you add the band around it and to come out perfect so i'll just label it total neck this is front then this is back total neck so the last and very special neckline, I saved the best for the last, which is our sweetheart neck. Most um, African blouses, the blouses are African women wear, mostly the mothers or the blouses they wear in marriages and occasion. Most times they are made with this sweetheart neck and it's always coming out very lovely and you can do your sweetheart neck in an, on an off shoulder blouse and it will come out very fine you can do it even on a corset top so sweetheart is really sweetheart well so we're making sweetheart neck and this is the last neckline we're learning to the sweetheart neckline so just watch me for the sweetheart neckline we still unfold like this you take the neck wideness of three and a half and then the neck depth of eight inches so three and a half by eight just make sure you measure on all sides so that to be you are sure that it's perfect one side is not longer than one side or wider than okay so my marker i decided to mess up today but well our video is still go on so this is it this is 8 inches, this is 3 and a half of 3.5. So for other neckline, we came came in like this. We're coming inward. So I, I'll con call that concave. But for the sweetheart, we are going outwards. I'll call that convex. So what you can do is you can measure two and a half here. If you do not have a French call, measure two and a half here. Connect from here to the two and a half to wherever it stops on this line. Or you can take the measurement of this line, take either the midpoint of the line, then connect it outward to this end. But me, I like to do three and a half. I don't know, but I just like it. I like what are the outcome and all of that. So I'll be doing three and a half. So on this eight inches line, I'll just mark three and a half. I said you can take the midpoint, which is four inches. The midpoint of this line is four. This line is eight. The midpoint is four. So you can take four just from this beginning point here. Just mark it straight to the four. You are not marking it like this. You are marking it outward like this. So guys, I said it's a convex curve. So just make it like this. But I'm not using half. I'm using three and half. So it's from this three and half, I'll still form my curve. You could you could use your French curve, but you have to be careful on how to place it. You use your French curve. For me, I like to do free hand sketch because I think I get better results with free hand. So I'll just sketch it out. Oh, this one is better now. This marker is better. So I'll just press sketch it out. So this is it. So this is three and a half. That is from here to here is three and a half for me. I said you can go as much as four inches. Then I started at this point, just curved it into it. Or I said you can measure here two and a half or three then curve it from this point 
So wherever the two and a half or three stops, just copy to this side. So whatever way you can paste it, and customize it to your taste. So I did three and a half, then curved it to this part. So this is a sweet heart neck line. I just hope you enjoyed this very very brief tutorial on necklines. Wow, sweet hearts. <laughs> so this is beautiful, and this is our sweetheart neck now. Just liberate sweetheart neck. So basically, this is our sweetheart neckline. So please don't forget to share this video with your loved ones. And if you want to search me on Facebook, I'm AJ Stylexo on Facebook, and I have some tutorials, some trainings, free trainings. You could just chat me up on Facebook, search me on Facebook with the name AJ Stylexo, even on Instagram at AJ Stylexo. You could chat me up to join one of my free trainings. Bye.